What's up guys, it is Kelly OG here. I know the lighting is not the best. I wasn't planning on making this video. Um, it was kind of a spur of the moment decision because I was getting so many requests for people asking, how did I find this crazy trade that I found for my group this week? Um, it produced over a thousand percent return, over 2,000, over 3,000, over 4,000, over 5,000 percent, over 5,000 percent. Um, <clears throat> So I kind of wanted to break down to you guys exactly what I saw because the way I trade and the way I use technical analysis is not the way you see a lot of other traders make it. Obviously, I got my iPad here. It's low key for show. I won't lie to you. I rarely use it, um, but it makes my setup look really pretty. All I have is really my MacBook that's right in front of me and my phone, which I'm actually recording on. That's actually what I use to um, chart. And I try to make it really simple. I try to make it really easy because I personally believe that I mean, it's not even that I personally believe it, but I prefer to use the easiest way to get the best results, the most efficient way to get the best results. I used to be an industrial engineering major and that's essentially what they do. So maybe I should go back. I don't know, but I'm going to break it down to you guys. So you see, you can see exactly how we banked off this. We made so much money um, and I want you to be able to do the same things when you're trading. It doesn't ever have to be with my group. Of course, if you do want to join in my group, <clears throat> If you do want to join my group, sorry, banking, I'm banking, we're both banking, boom, banking makes the world go around or something like that. But without further ado, I'm going to start recording my screen and let's get right into it. Okay, guys, so what we are currently seeing right here is Roku, as you can see right here in the top corner of my screen. I don't know why, there we go, it's letting me zoom in. But yeah, that is Roku. It is a stock, if you didn't know that. Um... Oh, I don't know how to zoom out. What did I just do? Y'all, I just messed up my computer for this video. Um, I hope it was worth it. It was. So this is Roku. Roku is a stock. If you don't know what stock is, well, you should probably check out my intro to um, options trading. I talk about stock market, what a stock is, all that. I break it down super easy. I notice a lot of people, when they do breakdown videos, they use literal, you know, dictionary definitions, which is great, but that's not how somebody's going to understand. So that's how I try to break it down to you guys. But Roku is a stock in the stock market. It is uh, NASDAQ. There's three different stock exchanges. There's the New York Stock Exchange, there's NASDAQ, and there's Amex, the American Stock, or the American Stock Exchange, if I'm not incorrect. Sorry, it's off the top of my head. Listen, I didn't plan on making this video. Maybe I didn't do a little bit of studying. Please forgive me. But um, yeah, so I know right now you're looking at this chart and you're like, all I see is a bunch of lines and a whole bunch of yada 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 like what's going on why is there a rocket ship why is it upside down don't worry we're gonna get to that i'm gonna break it down i'm going to show you here are some discord notifications because i do run the number one discord in the world um if you did not know that well now you know so if you hear it it's just because we're in there and we're popping even late at night on a friday when the market is closed and not open till monday but um, I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. So this is TradingView. TradingView is a platform where you can chart stocks, cryptos, or foreign exchange currencies completely free. Um, I've currently used the premium version. I think it's worth it only because it lets me see lower time frames, which I really like. However, you completely do not have to. Um, you can still make a lot of money and still get very profitable trades without ever using the premium version. And I say that to say because I'm currently on the 15 minute time frame, which is available on the free version. And that's usually how I'm finding these plays. But I'm going to go ahead and kind of break this down for you guys. Um, so the way time frames work for people who don't understand and they're like, how do I know what to choose? Um, so whenever I'm charting, if I'm looking for the overall prospectus, like, hey, is this stock looking bullish long term, bearish long term? I'm still going to have my chart stuff. Just ignore them for now. I move the rocket ship away. Um, but as you can see right here, you know, I'm just, oh, this is a perfect head and shoulder, or you can call it a double top, whichever one you want to call it. But yeah, so this lets me see where is it going, you know, long term, because this is week by week. How did Roku perform? Um, I would do that more for if I'm swinging long term or wanting to play it long term, even the one month for super long term. Um, then if we're looking at the one day chart, that's how did Roku move day by day since, you know, all these months down here that you're seeing. And that get, I like to use the one day if I'm like, OK, is this worthy of a swing? Um, you could even use the four hour. I like using that, too, for swings. If you don't know what a swing is, a swing is when you buy a stock and you hold it for one or more days. 
um, before selling. A day trade would be if you buy and sell within the same day. So you're gonna hear that terminology from a lot of people. You also hear leaps. Leaps are contracts, stocks, whatever held for over a year. Um, I like to use the one hour though. Let's see, I'm trying to say, I'm tr sorry, sorry. Let's say I'm trying to see what's going to happen within the week. Um, then I'm definitely looking at the one hour and then I'm gonna look at the 15 minute um, to see what's immediately gonna happen. If I really wanna know what's immediately, immediately gonna happen, that's where I go to the five minute. Those, my favorite really, I'm looking at, I'm looking at all of these really. Um, but if I'm charting within the week or within the couple of days or whatever, then um, I mean, within the couple minutes, I'm looking at one hour, I'm looking at 45 minute, I mean, sorry, I'm looking at one hour, I'm looking at 15 minute, and I'm looking at five minute. But yeah, so let's officially get into this because I don't want this video to be super long. I have a record of letting these videos be super long, but I also want them to be really entertaining for you guys and really beneficial for you guys and really helpful for you guys. So without further ado, let me officially get into this. So that was just a really brief overview of Robin Hood. <laughs> I said Robin Hood. Oh my gosh, of TradingView, um, the platform that I use personally to um, chart. I'm always on TradingView. I look at prices on TradingView. I won't go on Robin Hood to look at the prices. I'm just always looking at TradingView. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go ahead and start, like I said like a minute ago, but I'm gonna go ahead and start. So first thing that we have right here is, um, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in time it's gonna make it easier. So to go back in time, you'll see that I press this. Um, boop, 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 boop. Yeah, let me zoom in. You'll see that I press this bar replay button. So I'm gonna go ahead and when you press that, you can actually choose which stock you would like or which candlestick you would like to go back to. So I'm gonna go right here. Um, I am going to take away, no, I'm gonna take away this. I'm gonna take away this. Yeah, really, that's all you really need to see. So um, you're going to see this purple shaded area. I'm going to move and then literally in five seconds, you're going to realize why I had it. So <clears throat> essentially what happened on, I believe this was Wednesday, is Roku went ballistic. So I had Roku right here. This is where I bought Roku um, on Monday and it did pretty good. It was 100% return on Tuesday. I sold for 140%. I said, cool beans, doubled my money and some, I'm out. And then I woke up on Wednesday and all the contracts were up 5,000%. And I said, oh my God, <laughs> you know, cause that's, uh, if you don't understand what percentage is, it's equivalent of turning like, just put a hundred dollars in front of it. So if you see a percentage, you turned a hundred dollars and you made this profit. So that's equivalent to turning a hundred dollars into $5,000. So when you sell, you sell for $5,100. If it's a 300% return, you turn a hundred dollars with 300 profit, cause that's 300% return. You turn that into four hundred. No, actually, I lied. You turn one hundred dollars into three hundred dollars. I. It's late at night. It really is. If you can't tell by how dark it is, but six minutes into this video, and I haven't been able to properly give y'all what I wanted to give y'all. This is gonna be really quick once I explain it. So, um, first thing I noticed though, right, is boom to boom. You see right here, price goes from right here this area and shoots up to this area. And um, it keeps going up and keeps going up. So eventually it comes up to this 265 area. And so I'm charting it like, oh my gosh, is Roku about to break out? Because I'm sick that I missed out on a 5,000% return and could have taken my account to an insane amount. So um, I'm charting it and then I'm like, wait a second. All I see is this gap fill, like this giant gap fill. And if you don't know me, I like to trade gap fills and breakouts. You're gonna understand that, understand that in a second. So first thing I'm noticing is there's this giant area. And the best way I like to put that is if you are holding, think of if you're holding a mug, I don't have a mug at the moment, but if you're holding a mug and um, you know, let's say it's, it's a full mug, like for, forget that the handle is blocked out. In order for you to fully fill up the mug and for it to do what it needs to do, it's gonna have to go through that area. It's gonna have to fill that gap to fully be sealed if that's making sense. I hope it is. Um, but what happens is the only way it's gonna boom, like if you just dump a whole bunch of water, just real quick, you dump a whole bunch of water into that mug, it's gonna probably overflow and then fizzle out. It's not gonna get fully filled because it has to fill that gap. So basically what I'm trying to say is that this gap right here, the this is the mug and it's like, boom, water was splashed in here, but 
it has to come back to fill its little handle. So this is what I call a gap. And that's why you see me do this shaded area. Cause this for me, I'm like, okay, I wanna see price come to this area. Cause this is where a gap is. So what I would actually do right here is go back to the, probably the one hour time frame. I'd honestly probably do one day. So I'm gonna go to one day and I'm gonna kind of see, okay. Um, no, actually I'm gonna do one hour. Cause I want it more, you know, like closer increments. I wanna see what price is gonna do almost immediately. So. I'm just here spreading out the prices so it's easier to see. Um, ooh, ooh, what did I just do? <laughs> Forgive me, I don't know what I just did. Um, oh. Okay. Okay. Y'all, I don't know what I just did. Oh, I went all the way up. That's what happened. Kelly, do better. Wait, no, I don't know what happened. Y'all, I don't know what happened. What the heck? We're in 2022 right now. <laughs> Let me stop recording really quickly. No, actually, I'm not gonna stop recording. I just need to, I'm gonna refresh this because I don't know what I just did. Okay, cool. So Kelly just messed up um, her trading view for a second there, but it looks like we're back in business. Um, so, I am going to, like I said, strengthen out these or lengthen out these time frames. I'm going to make price a little bit more viewable. And now, um, let me bring this down a little. So, if I was to take away this square, which for you can be confusing, forget about all this stuff. Um, literally, you can forget about it. I'm going to move it back in a second. Um, but if we are, oh my gosh, this is becoming so. Look at me accidentally making pennant flags that's funny but yeah so just look at where price is just nakedly right first thing i look at when i'm looking at a chart is support and resistance so i come to the highest point and i'm like hmm this 265 obviously i would probably be in one day to see if it touched but i would go back in time um to see if this 265 was touched again at some point but i'm just not going to do that for the purpose of this video not being 45 minutes long um, and I'm going to show you what you need to see. So you can see right here, right? I see, okay, there's a gap right here. And <clears throat> actually, sorry, I'm going to go back in time because it didn't go back in time. There we go. So there's a gap right here, up here from this 264 area all the way up to 269, 270. And then there's a gap down here from 233 all the way down to 220. And so I know somebody is looking at this like, well, how do I know it's not gonna keep going up? And most people might think, oh my gosh, it's forming a pennant flag. Cause that's the first thing I, th I think. Um, however, I knowing gaps told myself, okay, well this doesn't really make sense because, sorry, I have to zoom out just a little bit. Okay. If I was to go right and, um, excuse me, I'm so sorry. If price was to just keep going up, like that's cool and all that it keeps going up, but price going up wouldn't make sense because it would fill this gap, but it has all this area to still fall. So I was like, okay, it could keep going up and I will wait on it. I will be patient and I will wait on you Roku to come back down to me, but I'm not gonna force it. At some point it's gonna have to come back and fill this ginormous, like this is a huge gap that it has. So I'm gonna take everything back in time. Yeah, this, okay. It's not gonna give me all my cute little things. Come on, give me my cute little, okay, it's not gonna give me all these. So I might as well just delete them, you know? Okay. Delete, 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 delete. All these cute little deletes. And now we are officially on go 12 minutes into this video. Wow, just stay with me. Um, because one thing I like to do when I'm teaching anybody anything is I understand that I already have the knowledge but I know for you it may be brand new so some of you may be like okay Kelly we already understand this trading view stuff but somebody's in here like I've never seen trading view in my life so that's why you saw me do the brief trading view breakdown that's why I was kind of showing you all that because I'm thinking of the person who may not know at all um, so it may make my videos a little bit longer you can always feel free to skip through but you may also learn something very beneficial so um yeah, so like I said, I was like, okay, you can come back to fill this gap, 
but it has to come fill this gap, baby. Like, you can't just stay there. So, I think it's gonna come fill this gap right here. Let me go back to the 15 minute time frame because I wanna see what it's immediately gonna do. You're gonna see me zoom in a little bit. Um, oh, okay, now I have to zoom out because I have to adjust this. But yeah, so. The reason I stretch out these numbers is so that it's easier for me to kind of see the exact amount. I want to be able to see the candlesticks. I want to see what is going on. My cute little shading area is moving away. Oh, for those of you who want to figure out how to put the shading area, I actually delete that too. Um, you're going to come right here. No, sorry. Right here to this paintbrush. And you see where it says rectangle. You're just going to go like this. Boom. You make the rectangle. Um, I made mine purple. I don't know why. I think it's kind of cute. Maybe. But um, yeah, so you can just kind of see the reason I did that area too. So it touches right here and then you can actually stretch it out and you will see that if you really adjust it, it's touching this 220 area. It's touching this area. So I see price falling down. Okay. Price has gone as high as 265. Whatever. I see it coming down and I see it's making this little arch. I'm like, okay, baby, you're trying to fall, aren't you? You're trying to fall. You're trying to fall for me. Nah, I'm playing. But um, yeah, so I see it coming all the way down. So when you're charting and you want to validate a play, the first thing you want to look at is confluences. So how confluences are kind of like reasonings. You want multiple reasonings to validate why you should or should not get into a play. And um, I'm going to show you that right now as to how I find my found my multiple multiple reasonings for Roku. Um, First one is the gap fill. We got a gap fill. And I'm gonna show you a second thing. This is the only indicator I use. Um, let me move the speed box. And it is the RSI. The RSI is the relative strength indicator right here. It's gonna show you if a stock is overbought, oversold, underbought, or undersold. So if it's overbought, it means too many people have bought it. Dude, you've been going up too high for too long. You need to come down. And then oversold, it's been going down for too long. You need to come back up. And then um, undersold, overbought, it's like, hey, this thing has not been bought up. It needs to come up. Or this thing is um, underbought, undersold. Oh, yeah, it's not being, like, sold or whatever. So bring it back up. Um, I mean, yeah, underbought. <sighs> okay. Underbought means that it's... Well, actually, you can actually just use overbought, oversold. Um, underbought would be if it's oversold, like that's literally what it is. And then undersold would be if it's overbought, you know, but any who's. Mm. What we're going to look at right now um, is the RSI. And as you can see, RSI is overbought. So I'm like, okay, I don't think this boy wants to keep going up because he's almost out of breath. He needs to come back down and get some fresh air and some breath you know, some, some catch a nice breath, right? So that was another reason I said, okay, well the RSI, why aren't you down here, buddy? The RSI is overbought, so it has to come down. So not only is it, do I want it to fill this gap, it already has to come down or it's already on its way down. As you can see, it's entered back into their shaded area, right? So you generally want your RSI around 50. That's a really he healthy rate. Honestly, when it's around 50, that's when you're gonna see a lot of what you would call, um, consolidation it's consolidation is just the stock moving side to side before it's preparing to do something um, so an example is right here this is around the 50 area you can see these candlesticks are kind of just staying in the same place same place same place so that's what you would see with the 50 now if it's below 50 that's when you're looking okay it needs to buy back up soon if it's way above 50 it needs to sell soon so we're looking at that um, so that was my second reasoning my third reasoning is actually this right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these lines as you can see, and I'm gonna actually stretch this out to make it easier on me. And I'm gonna take this. Oh my gosh, the speed, the speed thing is messing with me. Hold on, sorry guys. Boom, so you see how these touch? This is what you would call a rising wedge. It is actually a chart pattern, and I actually have it pulled up right here for you guys. Boom, 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 boom. So a rising wedge on the upside, as you can see, boom. You can't see the upside because it just shot up, but boom, it would be like, just pretend this is one giant green line, right? And it's going up and up and up. 
Most people be like, hey, uptrend. Mm, it's a reversal. So it moves up, 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 and then boom. A rising wedge can be kind of like this. As you can see right here, it's a little sharper with this one. If we zoom in right here, it's a little sharper. Um, and ours was real up, up, up there, but it's the same thing, it's just a rising wedge. Know that rising wedges go up. I mean, rising wedges shoot down and falling wedges shoot up. Like that's what the stock wants to do. I love playing wedges. I love playing um, gap fills. So now at this point, I'm like, okay, let me go get my little down arrow um, right here. I'm like, okay, well, this bad boy wants to come down. It needs to come down. And I'm like, okay, well, where is the next level of support? And so I'm looking and I'm looking and I say, oh my gosh, it can, like, if you're looking, when I look for support and resistance, I look for two candles to touch. So do we have two candles touching here, right here? 238, we do. So to me, I'd say, okay, well, if it, this candle right here and this candle right here, I say, well, if it breaks 238, then I'm gonna bring it all the way down. I'm gonna bring it down, gonna bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. And, um, if it breaks um, 238, I'm going to bring it down and just look for where it matches. And then another one we have candlesticks matching is 235 actually heavily. We got right here. We got right here. We got right here. Um, we got this green one right here, this tiny green one. Then we got right here. So my point being, I don't even have to look for how dramatically it is. I just kind of tell myself, listen, you can play this thing all the way down because it doesn't really have a level of support until 243. Do you see that? We have this candlestick right here, and boom, 243. All the way from 256, you could have played that. That right there, 800% return. Um, and then you can tell yourself, which is just what I told my group, I said, well, under 233, it's going to 220 because there's no other form of support. Like, it just is one flawless boom. 230, you kind of have one right here, and then it's just, and it's gonna go down the field. Um, so that's kind of how I looked at it. And I said, well, guys, I see Roku going to 220. And if it goes to 220, I want to heavily buy it. Now look at this. This is 220, but it could just keep going. Roku could just decide, you know what? Not only do I want to fill this gap, I want to come and close this one too. And it could come down here into around the 210 area, fill that gap before shooting up to go fill that first gap we had at the very beginning, right up here in this area. So go all the way up to 270. So that's kind of what I was seeing with Roku. Um, that's what it could do. So we're going to go back um, forward and see, hey, okay, so we charted this rising wedge. Let's see what this stock does. So I'm going to press this play button. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Boom. I paused it. Do you see how and we could even extend this further? Because um, this is actually where the 265 was. But, you know, I charted it for y'all a little prettier. Look how it perfectly broke out of that rising wedge. I mean, just perfectly. So ideally your entry on a rising wedge would be like right here. You want to look for it to like actually have broken out. So sometimes I'll extend it to look for an actual breakout, right? And you want to wait for it to just boom. So it would be around right here. Like this 255 area is when I would have been like, oh yeah, you done boy. Cause look right here. It had heavy support at this 255 area. We had it touched right here. We touched right here. We touched right here. And then that boy, when I saw that boy running, I said, oh my gosh, that boy want to go to 220. Roku, you want to go to 220. I'm telling you. So, um, yeah, so this is what you're going to see is just that downtrend. And it looks exactly like this rising wedge pattern that we are looking at. I mean, it's almost, it's almost perfect, you know? So now... I'm gonna let Roku continue. Don't worry, we are almost done. I know this video is kind of long, but we're almost done. Look at that. I'm just gonna let it keep playing. It went right into the area, but I want y'all to check this out, right? I want y'all to check out what I was seeing. So I'm actually gonna go back a little bit more. Um, no. So I'm gonna come back to this candle right here. So as I'm charting this with the group, but I'm trying it second by second because everyone in the group is like, Kelly, Roku's falling. And we're like, Roku's falling. And everyone's going crazy, right? So I'm like, okay, I know people have their money in this. People are excited. More people want to get in because they hear everyone talking about it. So let's see what Roku's doing. And I noticed this right here. And I said, oh my gosh, God, you love me. Roku, you love me. The chat is about to love me. This right here is what you would call a symmetrical triangle because it's literally just doing this. 
like a pyramid. You know, if you were to flip the camera, flip it, it would be like a pyramid. So um, that is what you can see right there. Symmetrical triangle. Now, symmetrical triangle can go one of two ways. If a symmetrical triangle is formed on an upside, you can almost call it a pennant flag. It's shooting up, right? So price was to have been coming up and then you saw this form. Okay, price is continuing up. However, if price, ooh, sorry. Sorry, Nike, I don't know why I bookmarked you like that. But if price is to be coming down and then form, I want y'all to check this out right here. This is actually what we're looking at. I don't know why it's not HD, it's kind of annoying, but it's cool. Um, symmetrical triangles, you can see if price is coming up, it's going back up. If price is coming down, it's gonna keep going down. So I see this forming and I say, hey chat, hey chat, guess what? Everybody better make sure they have their friction on tight because we're sliding, we're sliding. And um, boom, as you can see right here, um, if we play it, started sliding. I wanna actually point out something too, if we go back to this candlestick, one of my members actually noticed this. Um, and this is also where I'd be charting on the five minute time frame, so I can actually move there to kind of show you how I'm really seeing it in real time. We're gonna come back to this little boy right here, but I just remembered this. If you come right here, you can see that we're watching another rising wedge be formed. See what happened on this area right here is a lot of people got scared and they said, oh my gosh, Kelly, you said this thing was going to 220. Why did we just wake up and it's a 245, which is this candle right here? And I'm like, got to see it through, my boy. No, I'm playing. <laughs> no, but I was, um, I, I saw it and I said, well, actually, I still think it's going down. Like it, it literally would make no sense for it to stay up because then it would just hit, be floating like this. There would still be this gap. It wouldn't make any sense. It has to still come down. So it does eventually come down, as you can see forms another rising wedge. Do y'all see this rising wedge I just showed y'all? So we go back to the rising wedge. What happens with the rising wedge? It breaks down, it comes up, breaks down. So that is what we're seeing. Except this one, you see this candle right here, came up, broke down. So again, if we play it, fell down. Then it formed into this symmetrical triangle. Then what did it do? Fell down. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? And it just kept doing that, right? So. This is where Roku is, right, Roku is right now, but I want to show y'all um, because I believe I saw it again. Uh, actually, no, I think that was, I think I saw it twice, um, but I can't remember because I definitely deleted my chart and I can't actually tell on this five minute right now, but I definitely did see another symmetrical triangle. I'm trying to, you're just seeing me move my marker because I'm trying to figure out where I found it. Um, I believe it was right here and then Roku fell. However, as I'm looking at it right now in after hours activity, it does look, as y'all can see, what does this look like? I want you to drop it in the comments. Um, and by the time this video comes out, Roku probably would have already done it, so you would have known if Kelly was right or not. But I want you to kind of tell me, what does this in the comments, whoever gets it right, I will give a free one month membership. First person to tell me, what it is i'll give you a free one month membership inside of my trading group and you can actually see for yourself but what this looks like this is what it's looking like to me it's about to do um and we won't know because market is closed so as you can see though it is forming lower lows lower lows lower lows um and lower highs every single time lower lows lower highs so that is indicative of a downtrend now that is pretty much all I saw with Roku. I just wanted to break it down. A lot of people were saying, hey, Kelly, you're stealing other people's plays and you don't find this yourself. And I was like, that is so flattering, dude. Like, do you understand how much of a compliment it is to tell me that I'm stealing someone else's plays? That's, that means you think that there's somebody better than me and I'm trying to steal better plays. And it's like, nah, I found this myself. So um, I just want to say that is kind of how I find it. If I go back to the one hour, I can just kind of tell you all that I think once Roku either comes to this 220 or this 210 area, because um, support and resistance is really an area more than a number, look at all these ugly things, then I think it is going to come up to fill this gap. And we're going to see one giant run to 270 and then boom, just be in it, baby. Anyways, I'm so excited that you guys stuck with me through this video. Um, how do I stop screen recording? Yeah, how do I stop screen recording? 
Do y'all know how to do that? Stop screen recording. Like, it's still screen recording. Like, I, y'all, I don't know how to stop screen recording. Oh, right here. Okay, boom. So, I'm super, super excited that you guys stuck with me through this video. I know it was kind of long, but I feel like it would help a lot of you. You can develop the strategy yourself, literally just using breakouts and using um, gap fills. As you can see, my, my trading setup is not super crazy. It is my laptop, it's a water bottle, and it is my iPad. That is literally all it is. And I'm still able to get crazy percentage returns. I'm still able to make thousands of dollars a day, thousands of dollars a week, and make the group tens of thousands of dollars a week, a day, hundreds of thousands a month. I mean, we're going crazy making millions. And um, yeah, it's not that difficult. So I don't know if anyone else does this. <laughs> like, I feel like it's just me, um, but this is literally all I do. I don't do super crazy charting. I know people get scared because y'all see all those squiggly lines. Don't be afraid. Kelly is here to, like, never fear. Kelly OG is here to give you a simpler solution to your technical analysis and your stock needs. So I hope that was able to help you guys. Um, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm dropping free plays all the time. So if you're not in my group, maybe you can catch my free play. I did drop Roku as a free play as well because that's how confident I was. And now you guys can kind of see my mindset and my process. And yeah, so I'm super excited for you guys to be able to witness this, to watch this. And I will see y'all on the flip side. Thank you for tuning in with me. Thanks.